In the first part of our Lighting a Small Space video, we'll take a look at a simple approach to replicate the sun shining through some blinds and onto our subject. So taking a look at our room, we barely have enough space here for lights. Really, our only option is to place lights in this small gangway between the bed and the wall, with the potential to boom lights over the bed if necessary. The main area we're going to be able to place our subject is the bed, and our window is just behind it so we can use this window as a motivating source. But using big soft light, it's going to be a little hard to control in this space. So let's go for something a little harder and more direct and try to replicate the sun shooting through the window. Our room is on the second floor and we don't have the tools to place a light outside of the window, but that's okay. If you use something as simple as a mirror, we can place our light inside the room and bounce it back to where we need it to be. First of all, we'll black out the window so that we don't have any stray light coming in. We just use two layers of black material here to adequately block out the light. Next, we can place our mirror and turn on our light. We use the Godox FE150 here. Now the mirror is reflecting our light, but it's difficult to tell as we have light spilling all around the room. A good solution to this would be to add a Fresnel or spot attachment to our light to control and cut down on our spill. However, with a low budget, you might not have these tools. So we're going to wrap some cine foil around our lighting unit to control the spill. Our example was quickly put together here and a little messy but you should always be careful of blocking fans and vents on your lights so that they don't overheat. Make sure you don't have any of your cine foil touching the bulb. You can see now that our light spread is far more controlled and our mirror is reflecting the light into a nice little pocket on the bed. This already looks like a nice patch of sunlight coming through the window. To cut down on the harshness of this light and to add interest and mood to our image, we can simply pull down our blinds to add some shape. This could also be done with something like a Kuka Loris, boomed in front of the mirror, if you need some more control over the pattern. Now our blinds are quite thin and lightly coloured. Because of this, as well as our light coming through the gaps, our light is also bouncing off the blinds on one side and passing through the blinds on the mirror side, creating extra fill light in our shadows. This is actually useful as it means we don't need another light for fill and it gives us the flexibility to push and pull our shadows in post to convey a darker or lighter scene whilst retaining a good amount of dynamic range. Now because of the angle of our sunlight, it wasn't 100% certain that we would always have a catch light in the eye, depending on how the subject moved his eyes. So we also added in an extra light, boomed above the subject, to make sure we always had a little eye light. We used a Godox LC500R LED tube, matching the colour temperature of our FV150, boomed above and bouncing from a tiny point on this paper lantern that we already had hanging from the ceiling. We turned the output of this light right down so it wasn't affecting our overall exposure but still gave us just enough to reflect in our subject's eyes. So by utilising something simple like a mirror, you're able to have light in places you might not otherwise be able to fit lighting units. This opens up more possibilities for shooting in a small space like this and you could buy things like mirror board and be even more flexible with where you can reflect your light. Hopefully this has helped in giving you something to think about in terms of lighting a space like this. Experimenting with things like mirrors is a great way to improve on your lighting skills and help you to think about how you can light a scene with the tools and restrictions that you may have. If you're interested in how I colour grade my work, I've just added a 21 minute tutorial video to my website for just £8. The tutorial takes you through the grading process in DaVinci Resolve for two cinematic looks. A more modern, punchy look, 
and a more classical filmic look. I've also included some practice DNG files so you can grade along with the video. Head over to www.robellisscinematography.com forward slash downloads to grab the video.